Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Back in the village today, and still getting a little bit used to the look of this ginormous <laughs> castle. It's not even that big, I'm just not used to it. it it's a lot bigger than what was here. The iron golems and the villagers are also slowly getting used to it. I've actually seen them wandering around here quite a bit, and I've had to prevent their death quite a lot. They liked coming up here, so I had to put some wall blocks because they were escaping into the fields, and we can't have that. Hello, Lilith. You making friends? Ah, oh, wonderful. Edna! <laughs> Hello, Edna. Gosh, I haven't seen some of these guys in a long time. Look, Edna and Barbara are friends. Oh. <laughs> I love seeing the little friendships that form around it. There's actually been some fan art recently of the various villagers. I'll put it on screen now. These artists are amazing. <laughs> I love the way that the different personalities of the villagers are able to shine through in your artwork. It's so cool to see. Thank you for doing art of my villagers. Look at those librarians going to work. <laughs> Look at them all in a row. <laughs> I, I love them for some reason. So that was Florence, Edna, and an unnamed librarian. Who are you? You're our Aqua Affinity Librarian. I'll name you soon. Don't worry. Of course, Pierre is here having a meeting with his fellow villagers and Barbara, making sure everything is running at the bakery. It's perfect. Everything at the village is as it should be. Now, speaking of the village being as it should be, we still have a bunch of work to do on this castle, sort of polishing things off and sorting out this whole area. I think something that I definitely want to do is sort out these maps here. I'd like to move all of those upstairs into the sort of longer hallway, this one right here. I think this would look great as a map room, sort of maybe along the top of this wall or along this section here. I don't know, but in here somewhere. I am, however, going to be leaving the chest down here. I like this as a chest room and it'll leave a little bit of a sort of remembrance of our original starter house in place. We're just gonna adjust this section, I think. Of course, on the list of things to do is still this sort of backside area to the village. Um, so we're gonna get some markets in place soon. And in order to get markets in place, we need wool. So let's pay our lovely sheep a visit. <laughs> Look at that castle. Hello, sheeps. I've come for your wool, please. Thank you, thank you very much. I also saw down in the comments, a lot of people wanted this place like officially named. And honestly, I think the Dandelion Kingdom or Dandelion Castle is perfect. It kind of just suits the theme that we ended up going for with the Dandelion Hill that was spawned on episode one, uh, this hill here had a natural patch of dandelions on it, and this is where we built our starter house. So I think Dandelion Kingdom is what we should definitely officially call this place. Now, introductions aside, it is officially time to get properly to work, I think. Starting, of course, with forming a few more of these connections, I think. This whole thing right here is gonna go. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep it or not, but I think from the outside it just doesn't make any sense. Like, look, look at this, look at this. Like, it just, it doesn't work from out here, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down, and we're just gonna turn this into, like, a more stone-looking structure, I suppose. But we will get a bunch of wood back, which I like. Gonna use stone here instead of stone brick to hopefully add a little bit of a difference in texture. And we're just gonna bring it up to this layer because this can be like a little doorway. That'll be perfect. I don't know if this is a perfect solution, but at least this little platform with walls around it allows the villagers to sort of see the outside world, but not actually get to it, which I kind of like. Like they can come up here, they can chill, they can look out, but they can't leave. And that's, that's very important. Where's my torch? There we go. I've also had a lot of time in general this week. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, the villagers are extremely distracting <laughs> today because they're really checking out the castle for the first time. Like they spend, they spend an odd amount of time in this area and they never used to come here. <laughs> so it's a bit distracting. Anyways, I'm gonna sort out this area. So the way I picture this, right, is that this is not an actual door. Like. You walk through here and it's a corridor that leads you over to here. This is like a long epic hallway and this in here ends up being the throne room. I'm not sure exactly what I'll do for a throne, but there's a throne here, okay? In theory, there is one. This means that I would also like for there to be a staircase leading upwards because we can't waste all of this vertical space. 
So I'm thinking we do a staircase on either side. And I'm not sure exactly what this is gonna look like. But right, staircase, either side. Oh, <laughs> that's not what I meant. There's a hole in my floor, whoopsie. So I think this is the height of our floor, I think. This makes a lot of sense, right? It kind of connects upwards. Yeah, that, that doesn't look bad. It's not great either, but it's not bad. I don't know what we're going to do with this space up here because it doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment. But I know we'll do something with it. Hello, Athena. Please don't die on my stairs, okay? They're not villager-proofed yet, so please be careful. This is gonna be the war planning room. Do you like it? I knew Athena would be drawn to this room. <laughs> I'm gonna put bookcases and like a big map and there's gonna be like tools and stuff and it's gonna be epic, Athena. It's gonna be epic. You're not really allowed up here though, I'm gonna be honest with you. Okay, be very careful on your way down, okay? Very careful. Don't jump. Do not jump. No. Interior plans aside, there are actually several other things that I need before I can get started on the all-important castle interior. So, we're gonna take a little fly. Uh, nope. I'm gonna take a... No. Take, take a... My runway skills are not, are not the greatest, but we're gonna take a little flight over to the Mesa, which I've never actually flown to before. Uh, I don't use the elytra very often. So this should be fun. Look at my castle! Oh, I'm so proud of it. Alrighty, so just beyond these mountains over here, there should be a mesa. I would like to collect us up some terracotta and also potentially some clay so that I can properly like texture things. The granite is fantastic, but adding a little bit of variety to it never hurt anybody. All right, here we go. This is a mesa island. There are lots more of these mesa islands around, but this one will do the trick for now. Gosh, there are so many mine shafts in this area. <laughs> I haven't really explored any of these, to be honest but I, I'm kind of just here for the terracotta. Okay, a few stacks of terracotta have been collected and now we are off to the swamp, which should be just over here, to grab some clay. Unfortunately, I do just have my silk touch on me, so I won't be able to get the clay balls to get bricks, but I can break it down a little later. And here we are, home sweet home in the swamp. I actually really enjoy a good swamp biome. It's kind of pretty. So, lovely swamp biome. I would like your clay, please. The watercolor in the swamp is honestly kind of nice. I, I know that most people don't like it, and it's meant to be like kind of ugly and dark, and but I, I like it, I'm not gonna lie. I do like it. Okay, so I now have a little bit of clay and a little bit of terracotta, and that should be enough to at least get me started today. So let us get back home. There it is. Home sweet home. So looking at this castle, uh, the main thing I'm going to be using the terracotta for as well as maybe some jungle wood and some bricks is just detailing this to make it a little bit more like, I don't know, fancy, the colorful, like a gradient. And I don't want to go too crazy with the gradients because we are working on a smaller scale and it doesn't work so well on a smaller scale. But just in little spots like this where we can have terracotta and granite and maybe even some brick, I think would be absolutely beautiful. Give me that back. Thank you. Whoop. <laughs> Hello, villager. Of course, this does mean quite a lot of smelting of the clay balls, so I am still making good use of our furnaces here. Speaking of the furnaces, somebody asked me if we could put the furnace wall somewhere else because they really liked it, and I, I, I agree. I, I also really enjoy the furnace wall. I, I think it was a great wall, and I do think that we shall put it somewhere else, like maybe, maybe just here. That's a pretty good spot. That could be a furnace wall. I'm gonna spice it up a bit. What do you think, Gollum? Another point that I heard a lot, which I really agreed with, is that we need some more pops of color around here. And I think that's going to work with some flags. Like we already have a big red flag up there. Also just getting some flags and banners around this castle would help. And also maybe some like accents of glazed terracotta in spaces. Hello, you two. <laughs> Gosh, I do adore how much the villagers hang out around the castle. It's, it's inspiring. But yes, uh, definitely lots of color is needed around here. And speaking of some colors, I think I want to go ahead and try to get a couple of stands in. Like these, this cult, these different, <laughs> the like market stands. You, you know what I mean. You'll, you'll figure it out. Hang on. Let me, let me go set up. 
So this is definitely one of the most classic ways to add color to any village, but it's just adding wools in a market stand sort of format around here. So I'm going to see if I can get some of these set up now. I'm not entirely sure how successful I'm going to be, but I'm going to try. I asked you all for some ideas on these and you all gave me so many good ideas. So thank you so much for that. I'm very, very appreciative. Some people said we should have definitely teas, spices, herbs. Other people said maybe some clothes, some silks, different things like that. And those ideas are absolutely fantastic and I will be using them in full. I think for this one over here, I'm gonna try to do blue and white. <laughs> and we're gonna do this little diagonal pattern and I think I'm gonna keep it flat, which is a little different than I normally would do. Normally I would like to give these a bit of shape, but I'm going to try to add some shape in other ways. I find market stands really difficult to build sometimes. Just getting like all of the different shapes in can be so tricky. Uh, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'm going to try. That looks a little better already. Maybe not the stair, right? Like this is okay. This is fine so far from this angle. And then the problem with this side, it's a little bit close here. So I might do some trap doors. That's kind of cute, right? And then we balance that out with a little more of that. A little of that, okay. Cute, cute. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. It's good, I think. I also don't mind the fact that the villagers will be able to jump over. They like doing that. They do it at the bakery all the time. I'm not here to stop them having fun. As long as they can't find a way to die, I truly have no business being the fun police for my villagers. That, my friends, is a very successful market, I think. Yeah, it's not decorated yet, but like the structure's there. Okay, next one's a bit awkward. This is Eugene's. Now the thing about Eugene's is I imagine Eugene would actually work out here. But I can't let Eugene come around out here because Eugene will probably die. So Eugene has to be on the inside of the wall and um, we're gonna try to combine Eugene's station in with another station. So yeah, sorry Eugene, you don't get to have your own little fish market, but I think we'll make it work, okay? Again, I'm not going with like the straight design just cause it fits a lot better when it's on a diagonal, honestly. And we're gonna do yellow for this one, cause why not? And some gray, yellow and gray. Pretty easy, nice and flat, you approve, Eugene? I can tell, the look on your face tells me all. I got it, it's fine, I know, you like it. And bam, another market stand. Not sure I'm sold on the gray, it kind of blends in a little bit, but it's good for now, and look at this. It's kind of cute. I wish there were half slabs, cause like, I do, I do want this to have shape, and I know that some people are gonna wish that I added a little bit more shape here, but like, when you add a whole like little lump up here, like I don't, you're gonna tell me if this looks better or worse, okay? Just, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It might be better. Okay, I'm gonna leave it for now, but you can tell me down in the comments if you like it flat or with a little bit of shape on top. I think the key is not doing it like perfectly square, just like having having little extra bits, you know? Okay, so far so good, right? We like this, it adds a little bit of color. Now we add the spice, right? Details, decorations, we cobble the floor, we get some mossy cobble, we bring some job benches down here, we really introduce the villagers to this area. Right, okay, give me a second. I am just adding a couple of finishing touches to the top part of this wall. Whoop, nope, not there. <laughs> and honestly, I am so in love with these details. I really think they worked out so well. Let me show you. So down in this area, I have sort of cleaned things up and just made it make more sense. I've added this sort of clothing store over here with different cloths displayed and also some leather armor. And I think we will end up moving our leather worker down there. Um, I think our leather worker is just over here. Yeah, hello. You sure are. Okay, I'm gonna put this back. Wait, no, 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 no. No, you're getting, you're getting distracted. You're, okay. Are you wanting to be a librarian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I knew you didn't want that. You, it's fine. I understand. You're just confused. I think it makes a lot of sense for us to have our leather worker down here because, well, 
and there's leather, but it also just looks good to have a cauldron. And I'm also going to have the shepherd working down here because they work with wool. So I feel like wool combined with leather makes a good clothing shop. And we also have a little seat outside. And then over on this side, we have our fisherman, Eugene, who sells flowers and herbs and mushrooms and things. And I think that that's very cute, Eugene. I like that for you. Honestly, just so much happier with the finer details of this area now. I don't know if I'm done with it entirely. This is looking a little plain, but it's an improvement and I'm happy with it. And it makes me very much in the mood to do some interiors, which doesn't happen to me very often. So I think we're going to run with it. The main bit of interior that I would like to focus on today is this bit, because this bit has me the most inspired, to be honest. Uh, it was a bit that I thought might be able to be inspired by Harry Potter. Um, so I think maybe just a couple of tables along here, some maps on the walls, and then some epic like archways with chandeliers is a great place to start. Um, let's start with the chandeliers, actually. I love using scaffolding for things like this. Okay, so this is absolutely perfect shaped roof because I can get a good beam going straight through here. And then just every now and then, I think maybe um, every two out from here and then one, two, three, and then maybe one, two, three. And yeah, that's probably good. So basically I'm just going along and sort of adding these cute little archways over the top of the ceiling just to add a little bit of detail when you're looking up and also give us whoop, <laughs> something to hang some lanterns off of. And then all I gotta do up at the top here is put torches along it and these won't actually be noticeable from the bottom but it lights up this section and makes it a lot cleaner in general. And then we get to start thinking about the actual chandeliers. I'm going to be using lanterns for this because I think they're really cute and really simple. And I'm gonna end up using a design I think that I saw Flip use once. Flip is another wonderful content creator. I'm not sure if Flip came up with this design, but Flip was the first time I saw the design. So I, this, I'm using it. And honestly, I think I'm gonna space these out fairly large. This isn't that large of a room. So I think just two chandeliers, just like so, hanging down should do the trick. And I gotta remove the scaffolding now. <laughs> Look at our chin, Athena! They love it in here. I love that. So basically this design just involved a bunch of these with some chains on the ends. Cause it kind of looks like it connects, makes a lot more sense. And then you just shove a lantern like so. And I like that. Honestly, it's a little bit low for this room. I might need to raise it. It's pretty cool though, right Archie? Right, Archie's going to bed now. But anyways, yeah, I, this design is, I think it's actually too much for this room. I think I'm mistaken. Like I do enjoy it for other places, but uh, it's not the move here. I think having them be slightly more frequent, but uh, like just simple chains might honestly work better. Obviously we have other options for chandeliers, but that's not bad. I don't mind that. And it does effectively light up the space as well, which is good. Okay, next issue is the actual sort of dining area chairs that I wanna have here. I think the main issue with that, with this comes from how thin the actual room is. So I'm gonna experiment with just some blocks and see what we like. Like I'd want it to be centered, but if it was centered, we only have a one thick table. Cause if we do a three thick table that takes up the whole space which is a little awkward, I won't lie. We could also just not have it be a, it doesn't have to be dining. It, I, nobody made that rule except me. Like there could potentially be a little table area somewhere, like maybe over this way, but that doesn't mean that the whole room has to be themed around that, I think. No, Athena, you can't jump out the window. As soon as I laid that there, you started contemplating that. Stop it. Athena is now my castle helper and I'm kind of living for it, to be honest. Athena, do you like this? Is this better? I think it's better. I think it's a bit... Oh, no, no, no. Athena! Ath it's just, uh, uh. Okay, we're getting glass panes. Glass panes are the next thing on the list that I require. I was definitely gonna do like some fancy glass pane colors, but I have red on me right now and Athena's threatening to jump out the window, so I think we do red. And if we need to add in some yellow or other colors later on, then we do so. Where did Athena go? Athena? They know we're good, you're inside I assume. Okay, this definitely looks more interesting. I'm thinking I actually do like carpet here. So that's kind of neat. 
Kind of enjoying finally having a use for all of this fairly useless armor. Okay, this is looking very royal so far, but I do think that it is missing something, and that something is my maps. It's missing my maps. These maps are all locked at the scale that they're at, so I don't have to worry about them updating on me. And there we are, some of our maps of progress in this world so far. We actually haven't done one yet for when the castle is built, so... I think we should do that. I think we should do an episode 32 map. And bam. Whoa. <laughs> the castle looks so cool. Whoa, those roofs look epic. It's right on the edge. So I think this kingdom is going to look even better with more maps all around it eventually, but this can definitely go somewhere. I think we'll basically just end up continuing this wall along everyone i've made a few changes because i finally had time to get back to twitch streaming so if you're not following me over on twitch make sure you are but basically i just had a bunch of like what would be off camera time on youtube but i had it all on camera which is pretty fun so as you can see we fixed up this area a little bit our angry tower now has a mouth and also a hat which is lovely we've got a whole bunch of bushes along here just basically dressing the area up and a brand new little tree to kind of walk under while we're on our path. I also worked on the castle a little bit. Who burn? Stop burning. Thank you. That's rude. Uh, as you can see, I actually went ahead and did that gradient that we talked about in this episode. It's really, really simple. A row of bricks, a row of terracotta, and then our granite. And I think that it just dresses up the towers just the right amount. This is obviously not detailed the way that I want it yet around the windows, but I did texture a little bit around the base. That's pretty much all I got done, to be honest. And while we're on the topic of maps, which is what we were just working on, I wanna go ahead and map kind of this entire area so that we can get a proper like planning room planned out. Why is there an apple? Who left their lunch on my floor? I just made these floors, Florence. <laughs> Florence and the unnamed villager. Okay, I love that you guys are hanging out in here, but I gotta decorate now. So here's what I'm thinking, right? Little table, something like this maybe. Maybe we do um, stairs instead. I don't know, it, it doesn't really matter what the legs of the table are made out of, but the main thing is that we have this many maps. So the entirety of the top of this table is maps. So that means we have three by four. Okay, three by four, we could do that. We could totally do that. All we gotta do is grab a whole bunch of sugar cane to make paper, and then we just need our iron and some redstone. And actually, do you know what? Maybe we can buy some maps. Does the cartographer sell maps? I'm not sure. I haven't really unlocked my cartographer very much. Hello. You do sell maps. They're kind of expensive though, but I'll buy some to level you up. Thank you. Okay, so three maps. Let's get started with this. So basically all that we're going to do, we're gonna click one map, see where this is and then we're gonna run our little white dot that's on it right to the edge let me take off my totem so that you can properly see there we are press the button and off we go on a little mapping adventure so i just have to go until my little white cursor is at the edge which is right here and create a new map then we have this whole thing then i'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of this map so over by our farms Oh, villagers, don't mind me. Okay, and right here, the cursor is at the edge. So, new map. There we go. And this now includes our farming area, which is not super built up at the moment, but I love being able to visualize it like this. All right, and now we can sort of get started with laying this out. So we actually have a little bit more than we need right now. Okay, I did it. <laughs> that took way more effort than I think that it should have, but I did it. So now we just need a couple more. We need the dock area, we need like the bee greenhouse area, and some of the forest to fill in this entire area. Let's go do it. Okay, so I know for a fact that this greenhouse was not previously on the map, so if I go just behind it, I should pick up the center of the next area. Right here. Yes, perfect. Okay, now this one's gonna go in the center and we just need to go to either side of it. Perfect, there's our cow pen and our little garden area and other side. Okay, and just like that, three more maps are complete. Hopefully a creeper doesn't pop up at me around here. And here we go. 
Just gotta rotate them and fit them into the puzzle. There. And there. Uh, this one's not filled in. That's, that's okay. I'll get to it. Next up is the area right in front of the docks. I'm not exactly sure how far out I need to go for this. I'm gonna go out into the water. I'm thinking this far out is not accounted for. Let's try it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that's the edge of our docks, and that's the center map. Now let's go get either side. Whoa. Oh, did you see what I see? That drowned has a trident. Oh, I wish I had looting. I would totally try to get that trident. I'm gonna try anyway. Oh, you bad aim. You bad aim. Hee <laughs> hee. You can't get me. Did you drop it? Oh, I didn't drop it. That's so sad. I would love to have a trident one day, but sadly, today is not my day. And that's okay, because we're making maps. All right, and the finishing touches. This is our world, everyone. This is it. This is the world. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. And actually, this table, honestly, I might just be able to take off the end. Oh, whoops. My bad. I love the way that this looks. It's a little table. I think we'll surround this area with bookshelves, a little chandelier, some fancy like kind of molding, I guess, around the edges up here. Maybe some like ways to get up and look out the windows or access the top where my bedroom is. I'm not sure, but I'm really happy with how this is coming together. This is a really good step towards an epic interior and I'm excited to see what all of you have to say about it. Hello, Eugene. What you doing? Wow, we're really hanging out around here. Okay, cool. Alrighty, everyone. And with that, I think that is all the time that we have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. It has been an absolute pleasure recording in this world today. I've had so much fun and I'm so excited to be back on Twitch and back to recording just generally more frequently. I only have about a month left until I'm completely done school and graduated. So we're definitely in the home stretch and I can't wait to see what summer brings us. Thank you so much for continuing to support this series and I hope I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everyone.